Good morning. <clears throat> Check, make sure I have sound here. Good morning. That I do. <laughs> How was everybody's evening? <clears throat> Hopefully everybody got some rest and maybe got to do a little sewing. We went home, I made tacos for dinner, which were absolutely delicious. I've been looking forward to those tacos all week. Made it two weeks. Yeah. yeah, Dr. Mike wants me to open a taco truck now. <laughs> I've made it two weeks of cooking dinner every night. So starting off the new year good. So it's uh So tonight I will research and find some more recipes so I can see if I can go three weeks of cooking every night. Um, could be pushing my luck, but so far so good. <clears throat> good morning, everybody. <clears throat> this morning we're going to learn about and talk about machine embroidered applique pretty um, basic step to embroidery or machine embroidery. Um, I would say really picked up popularity in the last 15 years, I know, which sounds like a ton. But when I when we first became a dealer and I first got it in, first got into embroidery, um, when I became a dealer for Bernina, I did not embroider before. Um, we didn't really do a lot of applique. It was a lot of filled in dense design. So applique has really taken off in the last um, decade. I swear, every day I feel older <clears throat> and older and older. So we're going to just look at the um, different ways to um, the, the steps to appliquing on an embroidery machine, as well as the different techniques and methods that you can do with your fabrics for um, machine embroidered applique. So we will, um, I think we can, uh, we'll get started. All right, good morning, welcome. I hope everybody's got their coffee, tea, or breakfast um, this morning. Thanks for joining um, me, Amy, for Breakfast Club today. So we're going to talk about machine embroidered applique. And so this is basically appliquing fabric into a background fabric that you would typically do either by hand with a needle turn applique or by sewing machine, which you could do with your blanket stitch, or it's also called an e-stitch in embroidery or decorative stitches. So that would typically be done on the sewing machine. However, mach adding it to machine embroidery makes it fast and easy. You also get the perfect curve and corner is everything is precise. It's all consistent. Every leaf in the design will look the same. And as an embroiderer, the um, because we're using fabric to fill in a shape versus filling it in with thread, that's going to greatly reduce the stitch count that we have on a um, design. Therefore, we can take designs and put them on a lighter weight fabric and things along that lines. You may not need as much stabilizer in that um, realm. So, for example, if this design was 100% thread. So you see that the stems and some of the smaller berries and stuff are all thread, but this center floral piece, um, the bigger flowers, and the bigger petals are all fabric. If that had been um, created and digitized to be 100% thread, we're looking at a design that's probably close to 75,000 to 100,000 stitches, um, especially if we're talking about something that is uh, the size of a quilt block. So maybe we're talking about an eight or a 10 inch square. 
that's going to take a lot of stabilizer and interfacing onto a piece of cotton fabric because probably we would be um, doing this to create a um, quilt and that's going to be really stiff. Okay, so by adding the fabric in and taking away stitches, your design is going to be less dense. Okay. It also allows you to add a little bit more texture because we're adding in fabrics with patterns and color variations to it as well. So appliques also make great designs uh, for applique designs are perfect for a lot of children's garments and children's wear. The um, stitch count is low, okay? So that reduces the amount of thread and bobbin thread that's on the wrong side of the garment, um, which can be very irritating to um, children. I'm sure that you've probably had a child or a grandchild that wouldn't wear something in particular because it was itchy and scratchy. Um, using applique designs cuts down on some of that. And even on top of that, if you, once your embroidery is finished, if you cover the back of the embroidery with a product that we sell called Gentle Touch, that will um, cover all of the itchy and scratchy. Now, all of the designs that you're going to see, images that you're going to see in this um, presentation today, um, I have linked and will be up on the um, YouTube tab of our website, which I will um, show you um, in a little bit. And you will be able to, once you get the PDF, you'll be able to um, click on this link and it will take you right there. Okay, so if you have any questions about the designs that you're looking at or where to find them, they are and will be part of the presentation. Oops. So the first thing to know that when we are appliquing, there are typically three steps to an applique embroidered design. The first is going to be a placement line that your machine is going to stitch for you. And that's basically telling you where to put your piece of fabric. Once we lay the piece of fabric right side up covering all of that placement line, we then would run the next color stop of the design, which would be a tack down. That would then um, tack our fabric in place, straight stitch, zigzag, you know, something along that lines. But it's gonna, that tack down can be sometimes optional. It may not be part of the embroidery design. It may um, be a little different. So make sure that when you're looking at a design, especially um, you're looking at the thread chart and kind of figuring out if you've never done applique from that individual or that designer before. And then the last is going to be once we tack it down, we trim the fabric and then we would run what we call the cover stitch. Now, sometimes the cover stitch may not be the exact next co color stop in the design because there may be some additional decoration and stuff that the, the um, designer has put in before it does the cover stitching. But the last step would be the stitching that we use to cover up the raw edge of the fabric. Okay, and that stitch can be anything from a blanket stitch, it could be a decorative stitch, it could be a, a satin stitch, you know, in this world, uh, today, we have so many ways of finishing off the edge of applique that it can change. All right. So once we have chosen our design and it's an applique design, we need to figure out how we are going to prepare our fabric. And there are two main types of machine embroidered applique preparation methods. And that is going to be either you're going to pre-cut them or you're going to trim them in place. Okay, and depending, personally, depending upon the type of cover stitch will um, define and pick which method that you're going to do. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about pre-cut. Probably the one that most people don't do as often, especially if, because um, it does require you to cut all of your fabric shapes first. Okay, so it does take a little bit longer to do, a little bit more prep. It is the preferred method if the design is going to be raw edge, zigzag, or blanket stitch applique, <clears throat> mostly because we can't get, um, it. we need those to be closer to the exact size. And by trimming in the hoop, it's harder to get. They're usually a little bit bigger. Um, great for methods that um, this method is 
great for designs or shapes that are very detailed. Um, like the snowman that you see here on the side, we have lots of individual pieces, small little areas up around the snow of his hat and, and um, inside the tree crevices that can make trimming close um, difficult. Now, if you own a personal electronic cutting machine, so Cameo, Cricut, Brother Scan and Cut, um, things along that lines, a pre-cut method is a little bit easier for you because you can use the um, printable applique pattern pieces or the SVG files if you have software um, levels that will open an SVG that you can then load into those um, that program that you're using and then um, cut it out with that particular machine. Whole nother class, okay? Not even gonna talk about how to do personal electronic cutting machine cutting for fabric because it's a whole nother tangent. <laughs> maybe another day, maybe a whole separate class. Maybe I will teach, um, maybe that'll be the method for Camp Cameo. Uh, next month and we can talk about prepping fabric. And even if you um, don't own a Cameo, you can still watch and listen um, and apply those particular techniques that we do for cutting fabric with a Cameo to your particular um, machine. So these are just an idea as to um, what the methods of applique are that I would use pre-cut so the dog paw on the left is zigzag. So you can see that the edge of the um, pad of the paw is just zigzagged, okay? There's no satin stitch, there's no nothing. So if you had done kind of a trim in place, it would probably stick out from the zigzag. The same with the blanket stitch applique um, that you see in the center. If we did this, um, a blanket stitch applique typically does not have a tack down, okay? Because the tack down would show through the blanket stitch and we don't want it to show. We want it to look like we did it by hand or by sewing machine. So really with most blanket stitch appliques, they are basically assuming that you're going to be pre-cutting your appliques. And then the flamingo on the left is what we call raw edge applique. It's hard to tell, but the shape is put down and it's stitched just about an eighth of an inch to the inside of the raw edge. And then over time it will, you know, fray, ravel, get a little fuzzy look to it, that type of thing. So those are the three typical methods that you would see um, the digitizer or the, the um, asking for you to pre-cut your fabrics. So let's talk about how to pre-cut. Now I, um, you typically, a uh, the design company is going to give you the printable applique patterns, okay? OESD usually places the applique patterns um, in the thread chart, okay? Documents, usually a PDF, uh, thread chart, information, how to do applique, how to do what you need to do, and then you have actual size appliques, okay? So they're not shrunk, they are the size that they need to be. So you don't need to do any um, increasing or decreasing in size. The number one thing that you need to make sure that you do when you do print them is to make sure that your printer is set to have no page scaling or set to print at 100%, okay? Even though what you're looking at says is an eight and a half by 11, some printers will still shrink that eight and a half by 11 just slightly, just to make sure that it fits with inside printable borders. And if it does that, then your appliques are gonna be smaller than what they need and not fit the actual um, placement that they need to fit. So you wanna make sure that your page scaling or uh, printing um, scale is set at 100% or turned off, okay? You just wanna make sure that you don't waste all your time and end up cutting things too small. So there, there are a couple of methods and things to do. I'm going to talk about applique fuse and fix first. Um, this is a product from OESD. We sell it in eight by 10 sheets, um, packages of eight by 10 sheets. It is 
sticky on one side and fusible on the other. And you're like, well, why sticky and fusible? So what is nice is that we iron it to the wrong side of the fabric, we cut our shape out, and then when we wanna put it in place and we want it to stay in place, when we peel the paper off, it's sticky and we can stick it in place. It does not require us to then go to an iron and iron the fusible down so that it doesn't move on us. And that's the other important thing about pre-cut applique is you don't want it to move, okay? So, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the fuse and fix uh, takes care of that for us and just keeps us from not having to go get a small iron or take things off and go to the, and go to the ironing board as much. It can be stitched through. It's not going to really gum up your needle and it's not going to leave your applique um, feeling overall super stiff. Okay. So I would take an iron pieces of applique fuse and fix to the wrong side of your applique fabric. Taking your printed uh, paper applique sheets that you pulled off your printer, a little bit of 505 on the back side of them, and then place them right side up on top of your applique fabric on the right side of that fabric. So up at the top picture you see here, you see um, the applique fuse and fix iron to the wrong side of the fabric. And down below that, we have the right side of the fabric up with your applique pieces on top of that. And then you're going to carefully cut out on the lines or right next to the lines um, so that you, your shapes aren't too big or too small, okay? And then <clears throat> if you don't want to use applique fuse and fix and you wanna use another double-sided fusible like heat and bond, soft fuse, um, soft web, you need to do a couple of things. First, you need to mirror image the pattern pieces. So that printable pattern piece, we need to turn over and use from the wrong side, okay? Because we're gonna trace and then flip and then cut and flip. So we need to be mirror imaged. You wanna trace those shapes with a fine tipped marker. I don't usually use a pencil because uh, the um, lead or graphite can smear on your iron and then transfer to your fabric. So usually I'm a fine tip Sharpie um, kind of girl. I also want something fine tipped because if you're using a fat tipped or a wide tipped marker to trace, where do you cut? Inside the, the fat, outside the fat, through the middle of the fat line. Um, so it's, it's harder to be 100% exact. So I typically take my double-sided fusible trace your shapes onto the paper side, rough cut around those shapes, split them all out into the colors, the fabrics that they need, iron them to the wrong side of your fabric, cut on the line, okay? And then you're at the same place that you would be with the applique fuse and fix. Your pattern pieces are traced and cut. Now, when we're ready, all your pieces are traced and ready to go, the next step is to start assembling your design. And again, depending upon the design, it's gonna depend upon the overall steps, but you're gonna hoop your stabilizer and base fabric. You would stitch a placement line. So you can see in the upper picture, there's a small um, box. We're gonna remove the paper from the applique and um, which would be your paper template if you still have it attached. And then we're gonna remove the paper from the back side of the fusible. So if you're using applique fuse and fix, it's sticky and you can just stick it on top of that um, shape, the placement line shape. Applique fuse and fix is repositionable. So if you don't get it right, you can peel it up and move it. If you're using standard double-sided fusible, so heat and bond, soft fuse, soft web, I would take my hoop off the machine, go to the ironing board, position my piece in place and then take a small iron and fuse it in place, okay? And then return the hoop to the machine. Now this particular design that's here does have a tack down. So in the lower box, there is a small, um, a white box um, stitched inside of the red, uh, just to tack it in place. But like I said, depending upon the stitch and the design that tack down may not happen. 
You're going to continue to repeat and do everything that um, you would do for the remainder of the design. So the um, this design here is uh, what's that three, five, six different applique shapes, one on top of the other. So the way that this particular design works, it appliques all the shapes first and then comes back and does all the cover stitch. Okay, because it's all the same color. But depending upon the design is going to depend upon how it does. So I suggest that you read the thread chart or um, look at the color stops on your machine before you just assume you know what it's going to do next. Okay, because we've all been there and done that. Oh, darn, I thought it was going to do this next. What happens if you have a design that one, you can't find the applique patterns for, or maybe it didn't come with applique patterns because the assumption was that you're just gonna use a chunk of fabric, okay? And you're gonna trim it in place and you need to make a pattern piece. So what I would do is I would stitch a placement line. You could even use scrap fabric. You could use your the actual item that you're embroidering on. Once the placement line is um, stitched, take a piece of stabilizer or tracing paper and trace over those stitched lines, okay? Then use a marker to trace over those lines and then you have your pattern. And then you pick whether you're gonna do double-sided heat and bond or you're gonna do applique fuse and fix and pick up from there. And that's gonna help you kind of get your pattern piece, okay? If you don't have pattern pieces. <clears throat> All right, so that's pre-cutting fabric, but there's also, like I said, you have the ability to use SVGs, but that's a whole nother hour long class. Next up is trim in place. And trim in place is basically, you're gonna use a chunk of fabric, you're gonna put it over the placement line, and then you're gonna trim it after it's been tacked down. It does save you time because you don't need to pre-cut and print and prep all your fabrics. We mostly see trim in place being done with designs that have satin stitch as the cover stitch, okay? So you can see the leprechaun hat here. There is two, three, four, five different applique fabrics that were appliqued down and then decorative stitched and covered with satin. So with um, trimming in place, you can use fusible and you can not use fusible, okay? It's, it's completely up to you. If you don't have a lot of stitching on top of the applique fabric, um, you may want to choose to fuse your shapes down once they're applique to keep them from bubbling and just to help them stay flatter, okay? So for example, in this hat, because all of the fabrics themselves have additional stitching on top of, you may not need to use fusible here because they are tacked down to the base fabric. But if it was just big chunks of fabric that were stitched there and nothing was stitched on top of your applique fabric, they could be a little fluffy or puffy, especially if it's an item that gets washed. So you may want to put fusible on the back of your chunk of fabric. And I like uh, OESD soft web. Uh, we carry it in the two size rolls. Uh, I think it's 15 and 21 or 17 and 21 inches. Um, the, it's very soft, is not overly stiff, really if you had two or three layers that were stacked on top of each other in terms of appliques, it is very soft. It's not gonna make it um, stand up and be stiff. Easy to machine, hand stitch through, that type of thing. I love this for using in my cameos and crickets. Um, it, it, is, it cuts beautifully. It's not overly thick, so I do like it um, for that. So with... We're going to hoop your base fabric and stitch the placement line. Now, the question is going to be and for anything is what color do you stitch placement lines in and tack downs? If I know that the 
tack down and the placement line are never going to be seen because they're going to get covered with a satin stitch. You can just use a neutral thread color, white, you know, that type of thing. If this is going to be seen, because maybe we're going to put a uh, raw edge applique over top of it, we're going to zigzag it. Um, you're going to want your tack down, your placement line to all match so that if they are seen, they're not like standing out like, woohoo, look at me, that type of thing. But for typically for satin stitch uh, type stuff, I just, whatever thread colors in the machine is what gets used. So I'm gonna stitch my placement line. Okay, so you see here on the right, on the yellow fabric, there's a little placement line. I'm gonna take the uh, paper backing off my applique fabric and I'm gonna place the fabric right side up covering all of the placement. Okay, don't iron anything, just stitch it on top. Then stitch the tack down. Now you're gonna see in this, if you can tell in this tack down, there are two lines of tack down some designers use one round of tack down, some will stitch around twice, some will stitch around twice with two separate lines, depending on the, the thing. Recently, most of OESD's designs use a two lines. So if in case you accidentally cut one, you've got a backup, okay, to hold your fabric in place. Once this fabric is trimmed, okay, and we're going to talk about trimming in a minute, then you would go iron it down. Okay. So here at this point, um, I would take the hoop off the machine. Do not take your fabric out of the hoop, only the hoop off the machine. Set the hoop on a flat surface. You don't want to be trimming appliques in your lap because that extra movement um, up and down and pressing on the hoop can distort and move your fabric. So we want to make sure that everything stays lined up. So you always want to trim on a flat surface. You're going to trim as close along that um, tack down and cut line, okay, as you can get. Now, scissors for trimming, it's really your kind of choice as to what, and I'm going to demonstrate uh, trimming after I finish talking. Um, uh, some of us use double curved, um, well, I use pretty much all of these, but um, double curved um, machine embroidery scissors, um, especially if it's a fine corner, things along that lines. I do like using my duckbill applique scissors, um, the smaller ones. I have a pair of small and a pair of medium, and I do have a pair of large, but um, the medium and smaller ones are going to help uh, just be smaller in the hoop. And most of them are what we consider double curved or single curved, that that way you can get over the, the side of your hoop and flat onto the fabric. So I'll show you that in um, just a minute. So once you're trimmed, you can iron your um, fabric down and then you can continue on with the design in the hoop until it's finished. So uh, this, has what one, two, three, four, five, like six different appliques um, inside of that particular design. And this design would then be finished and you would be ready to go. Ultimately, you wouldn't be able to really tell if both, if I done this design either pre-cut or trimmed in place, you really wouldn't be able to tell the difference between them um, in that aspect. So just a couple of examples of other applique designs. Um, just uh, Robot and Friends here. These are mostly satin stitched covered designs. Uh, the Retro Mod Kitchen. Sunday Ride has a uh, combination uh, applique and embroidery. Uh, bathroom themed. Lumberjacks. And some gnomes. Okay, so let me show you here, if I can get my camera to change. One second, pause for a moment.
Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, let's um, look here. So this is a placement line, okay, that was stitched. So this is an alphabet. Uh, so your placement line is stitched. I took a piece of fabric and I placed it right side up over top of my covering all of my placement line. Okay, and then we have scissor choices. Lots of them, okay? I'm a scissor collector, okay? So this particular pair of applique scissors, these are duckbill applique. They, I don't use a lot of, a lot in, for in the hoop embroidery because they are very big to be able to be getting into um, these particular areas. I do have a much smaller pair and then I have an even smaller pair than those, okay? So the applique scissors, what they allow you to do is allow you to get, I'm gonna try to do this with keeping my hands out of the way of the camera. Um, they allow you to get right up to the base without cutting the base fabric. So I typically will hold on to this, give it a little bit of tension and then just kind of slowly cut as I kind of pull. And that will get me very, very close to the edge. My daughter says she collects scissors. <laughs> There's 200 pair at home on the wall. Don't listen to him. Oh, don't listen to me. Listen oh to my him. God. Maybe more like 50. No, no. Let's I have to try all the scissors out before I sell them here. Cause if they're no good, I don't want to sell them. So then we have what we call, these are just in the hoop scissors. Okay. So this is, we call, this one's a single curve. Okay. It only has the one curve here by the handle so that you can get over the edge of your hoop and your scissors can sit flush. This particular pair of scissors is double curved because it curves at the edge of the hoop and also the tip of the scissors curve up as well. And so both of them pretty much do the kind of the same concept. Um, and you, I use these in these, um, would be used in these smaller areas. And just trim. I usually will take, um, depending upon how much trimming I've done, I will take a, a small lint roller and roll over my um, applique just to remove any little stray threads that kind of clipped and then um, came out just to get them out of the hoop. Then <clears throat> you can see here how um, close this is. Now, depending upon the digitizer again, some of them will go back and the next stitch that would happen before the cover stitch would be like a zigzag. And that would be used to cover the raw edge. Now your note here is that if anything is sticking outside of the zigzag, so if it zigzags in here and out here, if anything is outside the zigzag, it's going to show in your cover stitch. So you want to clean it up before you jump right to your cover stitch, okay? Now, why, again, this is one reason why we would pre-cut, okay? So this is a blanket stitch, machine embroidered, applique um, design that is a blanket stitch. And your ultimate goal is that the blanket stitch looks like you sewed it on a sewing machine. And if I did this as a trim in place, there's no way that my thread would be in the, the raw edge of my fabric would be where it needs to be to be completely covered, okay? So that's why blanket stitch designs really need to be pre-cut um, in the overall scheme of things, okay? The same with this one although he got a little small when he got pre-cut here, okay? 
But if I did had trimmed this in place, there'd be about a 16th of an inch of fabric that's sticking out from the um, edge of the design. And then like anything else, doesn't have to be a satin stitch. So this design is um, what I would call a raw edge applique. So it was just, it was an applique square that has um, a series of decorative stitches that are running around the edge to seal off the edge, okay? Doesn't have to be a satin stitch, depending on the overall. And then that one is a satin stitch, okay? What's neat is that you look at this, you're like, oh, that's a lot of fabric to applique. This is one piece that's applique, okay? So it's just one outer shape and then it does all of the embroidery on top to make it look like individual pieces. Okay. All right. Now, you can also, I didn't, I didn't get any uh, slides put in here, but a little more contemporary applique um, today is you find people using applique glitter. So um, in the world of Kimberbell, applique glitter, Leather, mylar um, are all being used. Um, you can use HTV, which is heat transfer vinyl, okay, um, to replace the um, fabric in an applique. Um, what's really nice is as well, if you have an SVG file and you can, um, and a personal electronic cutting machine, you can pre-cut your appliques with the HTV to add, um, and then put it into place. So you can replace uh, fabric appliques with um, some more modern contemporary um, leather, faux leather, vinyls um, in that aspect. Okay, do I have any questions? I haven't seen any, so obviously I covered a lot uh, this morning. Uh, if you have any questions, again, this will be, um, just put them in the comment box. These, what you see on the screen will be um, links that you can get from the PDF when I get it uploaded here in just a little bit. You can download and click on this Just Embroidered ebook on machine, on in machine applique. This is from Bernina that puts together kind of covers a little bit of what we talked about um, today and the different pieces and the different methods. It does cover a little bit for those of you that may own a cut work tool on how you could load up to um, six or more layers in your hoop and cut out multiples um, at one time, should you need multiples cut out. And then these links will take you to both Embroidery Online and Scissor Tail Stitches, which is where all of the design examples came from today um, for you to see. Okay, so let me show you here one more thing. So what I mentioned last week and I've mentioned this week as well, um, I'm in the process of putting up all the links and presentation PDFs from the last uh, three months of October, November, December, last three and a half months of um, Virtual Breakfast Club. So now on the front page of our website, which is materialgirlsquilt.com, at this top header, all the way over, you'll see YouTube. Okay. And then under YouTube, towards the bottom, you're going to see all of the um, topics for 2020 and then the beginning of 2021. If the word video is there and it's in pink, if you click that, it will link you to the video on YouTube. Okay, it's very hard um, to um, go back on Facebook and try to find older things. So I put the YouTube links because they're easier to find um, and link you over there. And then if there is the word presentation there, 
Um, if you click on that, the PDF will open. And inside that PDF is all of my screen images that you saw during Breakfast Club and um, links will be available um, within them if there are links for them so that you can um, go back. If presentation is missing, I'm still looking for those files. I don't know what I've done with them. So um, I am hoping to find the one on Hemming and the one on um, gathering, but at the moment I have not found it. I have one more, I have one more computer to look for, to look through. But otherwise that will be um, the easiest way to go and find the information and reference back to them um, as well at a later date. Okay. All right. Any other questions that I have from you today? Um, if not, I appreciate you joining me this morning for a little bit of information on machine embroidery and applique. Next week, next week, Virtual Breakfast Club will be on um, a sewing technique. We're gonna talk about bobbin work next week. So that was a highly requested um, informational um, breakfast club topic from last year. So we will be covering um, bobbin work, both sewing and a little bit about embroidery bobbin work as well. I hope that everybody has a great rest of the day and a great weekend and hope to see you soon. Be sure that you join our newsletter from our website. And if you do go to YouTube, be sure that you like and subscribe there. You'll get up, you'll get um, notifications when new things get posted. So thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thanks for joining me and hope to see you soon. Bye.